passengers is ready to be ordered. Seventy-six more Delta variant cases identified in Sonoa. Hello and good evening. Thanks for joining us. You're watching News at 10. I'm Shuhaida Arifin. A total of 14 million doses of Sinovac vaccine will be sold to private sectors and states beginning this month until September. According to Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob, placement of orders for the vaccine will be open after the COVID-19 Vaccine Supply Access Guarantee Special Committee JKJAV has given its approval. The Deputy Premier explained that the placement of orders will be open specifically for state governments and private sector including government-linked companies GLCs as well as government-linked investment company GLIC. He said this can help Malaysia to achieve herd immunity sooner. He added that the direct purchase would be through fill and finish method in Malaysia and the price would be determined later. Datuk Suri Ismail Sabri also said Farmaniaga has agreed to supply the health ministry with 14.4 million doses of Sinovac vaccine out of which 12.4 million have already been received and another 2 million have received approval on 19th July. Meanwhile, on the relaxation of restrictions during the current lockdown for those who have completed their vaccination doses, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri said the government is looking at several factors before the National Security Council can make the final decision. The Deputy Prime Minister said methods used by the neighbouring countries are being considered based on scientific data as well as views from local health experts. Explaining further, he said the government takes note of all matters and concerns aired by experts as published in newspapers recently. He noted that some parties are worried and ask for the ban on inter-district travel to continue, but most probably certain relaxations can be done. A decision will also be made on the permission for companies or factories, which 80% of their workers have received both doses of vaccine to resume operations. He said any decisions will be be finalised by the Technical Committee of National Security Council and they will be made holistically to avoid the risk of virus transmission in the future. The Health Ministry has reported a record high 199 COVID-19 deaths and 11,985 cases in the past 24 hours. The previous highest number of daily deaths was 153 on 18th July. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Nor Hisham Abdullah said there were 7,902 recoveries, bringing the total number of those discharged to 806,857. In a statement, he said the total number of infections now stands at 951,884. There are 137,587 active cases with 927 patients being treated in intensive care units and 459 requiring respiratory assistance. He added that Selangor remained the state to report the highest new number of infections today at 5,550, bringing total cases in the state to 337,897, representing 35 5.5% of the total cases in Malaysia so far. Of the new infections, Tan Sri Dr. Nor Hisham said 48.9% or 5,850 of cases were classified as Category 1 or asymptomatic cases, while 48.7% or 5,847 cases were classified as Category 2 or cases with mild symptoms. Only 2.4% or 288 cases were classified under Category 3 and Category 3, Category 4. Four and category five. 
Another 76 COVID-19 cases of the Delta variant have been detected in Sarawak. University of Malaysia, Sarawak, Unimas Institute of Health and Community Medicine Director, Professor Dr. David Pereira today said the cases were detected by ongoing tracking and surveillance of severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 SARS-CoV-2 variants circulating in the state. In his latest reports to Sarawak Disaster Management Committee as DMC Chairman, Dato Ahmad Douglas Uga Mbasp today, Professor Dr. David said samples from positive cases were tested between 7th June and 13th July, with the majority of the cases, or 52 cases, were detected in Kuching. According to him, the Delta cases were found by testing of samples from Hospital Sentosa, Sato Police Station, and various other locations in Kuching. He also said that 11 cases were detected in Serian, 5 in Suri Aman, 3 in Samarahan and 1 each in Cebu, Miri and Betong. There are now a total 93 cases of the Delta variant in Sarawak since it was first detected on 18th June this year. A total of 516 oxygen concentrators will be placed at Hall A and C of the Malaysia Agro Exposition Park MIPS Integrated Quarantine and Treatment Center PKRC 2.0 in Serdang Selangor. MIPS PKRC 2.0 Director Dr. Shahabuddin Ibrahim said the move was in preparation of patients' increasing need for oxygen. The halls currently place Category 3 and 4 COVID-19 patients. According to Dr. Shahabuddin, a total of 1,670 patients are being treated at MIPES PKRC 2.0, of which 1,300 patients are under Category 3 and over 200 under Category 4. Category 3 refers to cases with pneumonia but not requiring oxygen, while Category 4 refers to those with pneumonia requiring oxygen. The Industry Vaccination Center PPVIN at Chiras Selatan Rapid Bus Complex in Selangor for the land transport sectors begins operation today. The facility managed by Prasarana Malaysia Berhad is the second center to be open after the PPVIN at Putra Heights LRT station began operations on Monday. Rapid Bus Chairman Datuk Seri Mustafa Ali, who monitored the centre's operations, hoped that all staff would continue providing excellent services in an effort to achieve herd immunity. Alhamdulillah, sekali lagi saya mengatakan bahawa uh, kepuas hatian itu memang boleh saya katakan hampir 100% uh, dengan beberapa tindakan tambahan yang boleh kita laksanakan. Dan ini menentukan bahawa kita nampak ya, uh, kesiapsiagaan semua pihak memastikan kelancaran dan memastikan jumlah yang nak dimesir itu sentiasa menepati sasaran yang kita hayati. InsyaAllah. The PPVIN at Chiras Selatan Rapid Bus Complex has put the target to give the first dose of vaccine to more than 2,900 rapid bus workers. The centre will be open for four days, handled completely by internal staff that act as volunteers, with the ability to cater for 600 vaccine recipients daily. All vaccine recipients are advised to ask vaccination staff to show the vaccine field syringe before and after administering the jab. This is following a recent allegations of recipients not being properly injected with vaccines and claims of being jabbed with an empty syringe. Commenting further on the matter, Deputy Science, Technology and Innovation Minister Mosti Dato Ahmad Amzad Hashim stressed that the government views the matter very seriously. He also noted that video recordings are not allowed as they can disrupt the vaccination process. kerjasama juga apa ni boleh kalau apa ni yang mau menerima suntikan tu memaklumkan boleh saya tengok bercari ke apa ke kadang-kadang itu adalah satu praktis yang baik ada permohonan untuk apa ni dibenarkan mengambil gambar video setakat ini apa ni kita tidak membenarkan uh, dari segi pengambilan uh, video kerana ia akan mengganggu kelancaran apa ni 
uh, perjalanan pusat vaksinasi. Forty-eight foreign men and local senior citizen are under remand for four days and three, four and three days, respectively, to assist investigations into alleged violation of COVID-19 prevention standard operating procedures (SOP) by holding roadside idle adha prayers in Taman Pelangi, Juru, Pulau Pinang, yesterday. Bukit Murtajam Magistrates Court Assistant Registrar Has Liza Raza allowed a remand from today until Friday for the local aged 64 and until Saturday for the 48 foreigners whose age range from 20 to 43 years. The case is being investigated under Section 269 of the Penal Code in relation to negligent acts that can cause the spread of any life-threatening disease. The detainees were brought to the Magistrates Court at 10.10 10 a.m in police lockup clothes. Yesterday, a video went viral on social media showing a group of men in the housing area performing prayers in its car park area up to the roadside from 8.30 a.m. to 9.00 a.m. Home Minister Datuk Sri Hamzah Zainuddin in a statement also gave an assurance that stern action would be taken against the individuals and organisers involved for alleged violation of SOP concerning Idil Adha prayers. 30 immigrants and a local were arrested for attending a feast in conjunction with Idil Adha and Batu Caves Selangor. 26 of them were found to have violated immigration directives. According to a statement from Gombak Police Chief ACP Zainal Muhammad, the accused were caught committing the offence at Taman Selayang Utama yesterday after police received information from the public. Initial investigations revealed that they were caught for violating the SOP and for not practicing physical distancing. Some of the immigrants were found to have expired travel documents and invalid travel documents. The case is investigated under Section 269 of the Penal Code, Emergency Prevention and Control of Infectious Disease Amendment Ordinance 2021 and the Immigration Act 1963. The producer of the controversial film titled Babi was charged in the Petaling Jaya Magistrate Court today with participating in the filmmaking and displaying posters without a license from the National Film Development Corporation Malaysia Finas in November last year. Tohan Boon, 35, claimed trial when the charge was read out to him before Magistrate Muhammad Iskandar Zainal. He was accused of committing the offence at a building in Mutiara Damansara, Selangor on 18 November last year, according to Section 22, Subsection 1 of the FINAS Act 1981. Deputy Public Prosecutor Zamriah Zarifah Aris offered bail of 8,000 ringgit with one surety, an additional condition that the accused submit his passport to the court and report the nearest police station once a month until the trial is completed. However, Magistrate Muhammad Iskandar later allowed the accused bail of 5,000 ringgit with one surety and the case was fixed for mention on 14th October. In December last year, Persatuan Seniman Malaysia Seniman had lodged a police report against a film titled Babi, which was screened abroad because it was believed to have racist elements and was alleged to have tarnished Malaysia's image. Retail industry vaccination program to quicken NRP phase transitions. The Retail Industry Vaccination Program, RIVAC, will help expedite the transition of phases under the National Recovery Plan, PPN. Head of Vaccination Committee of Malaysia Retailers Association, MRA, Tiger Chia said, RIVAC will reduce the risk of virus transmission in the retail sector and revitalize business activities in the country. Sektor perucit tanpa berdampak bahawa vaksinasi adalah kunci. Bukti ini jelas. Vaksinasi sangat berkesan di dalam mengurangkan risiko jangkitan dan juga penularan. Industri berucitan mengaji serama 1.2 juta pekerja. 
oleh itu sektor perucitan harus diakui sebagai tongkat kritikal barisan hadapan ekonomi Malaysia. He expressed hope that Rivek will be further expanded to Sabah as well as Sarawak. This measures is to ensure that all retail sector workers are given the necessary protection and so that herd immunity can be achieved. It can also expedite the opening of business and retail sectors, thus securing the source of income for the industry players. The Malaysia External Trade Development Corporation, MarTrade, aims to assist 600 Malaysian companies and generate 60 million ringgit export sales globally through the Electronic Businesses Linkages eBizLink program. In a statement today, MarTrade said the program is under the government's People and Economic Strategic Empowerment Program Pemerkasa Initiative. The National Trade Promotion Agency said the eBizLink provides cost-effective and sustainable solutions for Malaysian small and medium enterprises (SMEs) and mid-tier companies (MTCs) to seize new business opportunities in the global marketplace. Over 40 eBusiness global campaigns would be organized under the program, of which the first project was launched online simultaneously in Kuala Lumpur and Beijing on 17th June. A total of 45 virtual meetings were arranged between Malaysian companies and Chinese buyers in the first project. The one-year program will be officially rolled out in the second half of this year. Haley Group Berhad Haley made its debut on the ACE market at 79 cent today, notching a premium of 11 cent or 16.18% higher than its initial public offering IPO price of 68 cent. On 12 July, the Johor based construction company reported that the public portion of its IPO involving 8.92 million shares was oversubscribed by 38.81 times. During the group's virtual listing ceremony today, its independent non-executive chairman, Muhammad Jafar Awang, said the group aims to raise 20.4 million ringgit through its IPO exercise. Prior to its establishment, the team behind the Heidi Group had been actively in... We plan to continue focusing on our core competency in building construction in Johor, while leveraging on our experience to extend our reach to the other districts. Our strong financial position will also allow us to leverage on our capabilities as a great G7 contractor to take on more major building construction projects with no limit on contract value. He is also confident that the group is well positioned to build a better future ahead with a combination of healthy cash position, expected profits to be generated by its operation, amount available under existing banking facilities and proceeds raised from the IPO. Currently, the group has 18 ongoing buildings, construction projects, as well as two civil engineering-related construction projects that translates into a total secured contract value and unbuilt contract value of 460.04 million ringgit and 249.58 million ringgit, respectively. In sports, Azizul Hasni Awang unveils new bike for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. They say running is a lonely sport. That when you run, Iron. Iron for Trelawney. Iron for Jamaica. Their beliefs run with me. Their spirit and their hopes run with me. And the more that joined, the faster we became. When you're the fastest man alive, people think you leave the world behind. But when you run together, 
us with you. National Cyclist Champion Dato Azizul Hasni Awang today unveiled the final version of the WXR Vortec bicycle, which will be at his disposal for the Tokyo Olympic Cycling event scheduled for 2nd August. Through a video uploaded on his official Instagram page, the cutting-edge bicycle created through a 13 million ringgit research and development project R&D was seen to appear in black with silver streaks compared to its previous version in full black. In a previous media conference, Dato Azizul Hasni, who has become one of the Malaysian contingent's best bet in securing a gold medal in the Olympics, has said he already used the bicycle during training sessions. Apart from himself, the bicycle will also be used by another national cyclist, Muhammad Shah Firdaus Sahrum, and they are given three bikes each. The investment by the National Sports Institute ISN in collaboration with Totalism Limited from United Kingdom emphasized an aerodynamics technology and physical weight of the bike in accordance to the race's character. The cost of the bicycle is estimated to be around 300,000 ringgit including R&D costs. The tracked bicycle competition will be on 2nd to 8 August in the Izu Velodrome, Tokyo. The sports industry vaccination program Sportivac will begin comprehensively after additional COVID-19 vaccine doses arrive next month. According to Sports and Youth Deputy Minister Senator Wan Ahmad Faisal Wan Ahmad Kamal, Sportivac is one of the seven prihatin initiatives to help sports industry players who were affected by the pandemic. Sportivac is vital towards accelerating the reopening of sports sectors, but it all still depends on the recovery plan. Difahamkan bekalan vaksin Pfizer sejumlah 40 juta dos akan tiba uh, bulan depan. Saya rasa perkara ini akan dipertimbangkan oleh MKN dan juga CITF untuk kita beri sedikit kelonggaran dan kota untuk industri sukan. The loosening of restrictions, however, will be subject to the currently ongoing National Recovery Plan, NRP. Meanwhile, this will also only be given to areas that are minimally affected by COVID-19, which may allow for spectators at stadiums as well as operation of sports premises. There are no cases of COVID-19 infection involving Malaysian athletes and contingent who are currently at the Olympic Village in Tokyo, Japan. According to Deputy Youth and Sports Minister Wan Ahmad Faisal Wan Ahmad Kamal, the national contingent are now in the phase of adjustment and the athletes had also started light training. So, mereka sedang adjusting themselves dekat uh, village, Olympic Village. Yeah. Saya tengok semua dalam uh, Instagram masing-masing semuanya dah mulakan latihan juga ringan-ringan. Atlet dia semua okey. Alhamdulillah kita ada pegawai di sana.